Linda Sanford is the only woman in this series I didn't interview. Instead, she was videotaped speaking to a live audience at Marist College. A few words of introduction. Linda Sanford is a remarkably accomplished woman, a member of the Women in Technology Hall of Fame and the National Academy of Engineering. She has held several leading positions at IBM, including head of IBM Global Industries, which manages relations with IBM's largest customers around the world. Among these are Prudential Insurance, UPS, and the Bank of Paris. At the moment, Linda is leading IBM's on-demand transformation. Linda has been named one of the 50 most influential women in business by Fortune Magazine, one of the top 10 innovators in technology by Information Week Magazine, and one of the 10 most influential women in technology by Working Women Magazine. As if all this weren't enough, Linda is also a published author. Her book, Let Go to Grow, was published in December of 2005. So now let's hear a few words from Linda Sanford. Trying to get our, our people and what we do to work differently becomes a challenge. We're always used to doing it this way and we're comfortable doing it this way. But the world has changed. If we want to be, uh, remain competitive in the, in the ever-changing world, we need to change with it. So the cultural aspects of it becomes very important. And a I write a lot about that, actually, in the book, uh, not only about processes and technology, but about the culture change here. And the biggest change is moving from what I call the old command and control way of running businesses, running organizations, into a much more collaborative, horizontal organizational structure. Um, and quite honestly, that is where I believe women in particular, I think, play a very critical role. Um, you know, I think women are more collaborative in their approach. Uh, to how they deal with you know, business issues, how they deal with teams and groups. Um, but I also see it, and we see this even in our own company, this next generation, men or women, are much more collaborative, mainly because you've all grown up on the internet. <laughs> very horizontal, very collaborative medium to begin with. Um, so I do think there is just huge opportunity uh, in front of all of us in terms of um, you know, uh, business opportunities, uh, to bring those, not just our, our, our intellect and our, and our uh, skill, but our approaches to bringing people together, to um, listening to ideas wherever they come from, as diverse an, uh, as an experience people may bring or background they may bring, um, embracing that diversity and really leveraging it to even greater, more powerful results and, and uh, new ideas. Technology plays a very important role in that as well, especially in today's uh, world, because businesses are global. Um, people that you work with are not in the same building. It's very different today. The colleagues I work with could be you know, thousands and thousands of miles away around the other, uh, other end of the globe here. So we need to be able to use technology to bring people together, first of all, help them find the experts, and then be able to collaborate on a very real-time basis. Um, and that is what stimulates a lot of the new ideas and a lot of the new, new uh, innovations that come along here. So um, I do think it's a, it's a great time uh, in many, many ways for uh, all of us in the industry, uh, whether you're still in school and soon will be graduating and entering the workforce or wherever you end up, or those of us who are in the workforce today, because I think we're just at the tipping point of a whole new way of which businesses will be run, of which uh, value will be determined in, in an environment of which our own talents and our uh, capabilities will really be uh, recognized and also leveraged ahead of us here. Innovation is no longer the purview of an individual or an organization within its four boundaries. It's going to come by bringing people together from diverse backgrounds, diverse experiences, diverse ideas, and, and putting them kind of around the table and putting a common problem on it and saying, what do you think? How do we solve it? And that's where we come up with truly breakthrough innovation here. Do we have some time for questions? Uh, you refer to a collaborative approach to work, and my question is in that area. How, do, how would, you, uh, talk, would you talk about managing uh, technologists and large technical teams and talk about personal characteristics that have made you successful in this task? Back 30 years ago, um, I was one of very few women. But at that time, you know, I had a male manager. Most of the colleagues I worked with were, were men. And this guy said to me, you know, 
Above all else, just be yourself. One of the things that I, that I find, and I, I love to work with very diverse groups, is that bringing them together and encouraging them to collaborate, I think brings out the best in everybody. When you bring people together and, and kind of create an environment where you listen to each other, and I think that's an important element of this. Lots of times people would think you end up with consensus, and I hate that word, <laughs> because consensus implies diluted result, and it's not dilutive at all. When I get the best of yours, yours, and yours, and your ideas, it is something where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It really is. Linda, one of the challenges colleges and universities are having in the area of technology is attracting students to, um, to areas of technology. Over the past eight years, um, schools have seen a, a drop in enrollment in technology programs of about 50%. And we're not talking just about the Marises, we're talking about the MITs. Mm -hmm. is, there, um, is there a way in which um, companies like IBM can play a role in reversing that trend? Because certainly the need for these graduates is, is there and it's expected to grow. If you look at developing countries like China and India, they are graduating five to eight times as many you know, math and science or engineering or computer science graduates as we are in the United States. And our, our graduates are declining. Um, and if you look at businesses, um, and it's not just high-tech businesses, it's any business, it's healthcare, it's, it's automotive manufacturing, it's, it's uh, education, all of these businesses today more and more are using technology in order to kind of reinvent what they do and how they do it. Um, therefore, the need for more you know, math and science, engineering, computer science graduates is growing at a time when the number of students enrolling it is decreasing. So when you project that out, we have, I mean, we, we could hit a brick wall, a major brick wall, if we don't stem that tide and stem it very quickly. I think, number one, we need to um, make sure that we as businesses are communicating what our skills requirements are. Today, the people on our manufacturing line, many of them have PhDs. PhDs. So what we haven't done, I don't think, as, as well as we need to do from a business perspective, is communicate the changes in the type of work that gets done today in our businesses, and therefore what skills are required, what courses are required. And I think we need math and science. I mean, everybody needs math and science, you know, early, early on. Uh, all through you know, the, the high school years and even into college. You may not be a mathematician or, or a computer scientist at the end of the day, we hope you are, but you're gonna need those skills. Have, in your experience, have you faced any, or witnessed any particular challenges that women face in technology? Um, and then another step even more personal, um, that you've seen women in balancing work and family and obligation. Mm -hmm. like, I'm guessing it's different than men. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Sure. The women on a team, and I know any of my colleagues here I'm sure would, would, would agree with this, the women on the team tend to bring people together, tend to bring the team together. Um, it, it is kind of in our genes. It, it is kind of in our nature to, to want to make sure we're hearing people out and we're you know, helping to solicit the best ideas. Um, and as I said earlier, more and more of the breakthroughs in technology are going to come by bringing multiple disciplines together. And if, if you can't get people to work together for multiple dis disciplines, you're going to lose out. You're not going to find that breakthrough. The, the, on the other topic, personally, I mean, this balance, boy, I, I wish I had the secret, the secret answer to that one. You know, there is, I don't think there is one answer. I really don't. I think you have to put balance in your life. You absolutely have to find the way to do it. You have a job to get done, and you're, you should be measured on the result, not when you do it and how you do it. So you know what needs to be done. You know when you need to deliver it. I mean, you balance it. At the end of the day, it's about getting the job done, not about being in the office for 12 hours a day. I have two, two children who, who are all grown now, so both of them are, you know, um, grown and working and living in New York City. Um, I think they came out okay. <laughs> what advice do you have for high school or college students, um, both men and women, who are interested in the field of enterprise engineering? You know, more and more businesses um, are, of all types and shapes and sizes, are 
are really leveraging you know, technology today. And so you, know, you have a much wider set of opportunities. You can go work you know, as um, you know, a, a technologist in a high-tech company, or you can go work, you know, as I said earlier, in automotive manufacturing, a healthcare, you know, uh, service, many, many different jobs. And your background in computing, enterprise computing, I think will, br will put you in very competitive stead here. I think we are at the cusp of a, the next wave of opportunity for, you know, men and women who are just entering into these fields today.